So uh, today's lecture is about exchange rates, currency exchange rates. As being an international finance student, we're going to open up this lecture with the currency exchange rates. That how do currency exchange rates move? What is the logic behind it? What are their functions? Why are they necessary? How can you make profits out of it? How are they determined? So you're gonna in, in today's lecture you're gonna start with the basics. That how are they calculated? So myself, your lecturer, Mohsin Azam Khan. And let's proceed on with the international finance lecture, right? So let's proceed on. So firstly, start with let's start. Let's understand what are exchange rates. Exchange rates simply, like let's suppose two countries. Let's suppose if two countries are, are, are exchanging goods with each other. If you have a country here and a B country here, let's suppose they are exchanging goods with each other. Obviously, they cannot exchange in the same currency. Like, let's suppose every country has its own currency as a medium of exchange. So, let's suppose A country might have dollars, US dollars, and B country might have euros. So now, if they are exchanging goods with each other, they will also have to exchange the currency with each other as well. So, what do we mean by currency exchange rate? So, if I ask you, what is the exchange rate? Of let's suppose a pen. What is an exchange rate of a pen? If I ask you, like let's suppose you, if someone asks you, what is an exchange rate of a motor vehicle, a car? What would be your answer for that? Price of it, right? Someone will exchange the car with you if he pays the right price to you, right? Similarly, exchange rate. Let's suppose what is the exchange rate of the US to dollars? So I want to see the exchange rate of dollars upon euros. So I want to get an idea. What is an exchange rate of euros in terms of dollars? In other words, we can say, what is the price of one euro? What is the price of one euro in terms of dollars? So I'm trying to determine price of one euro in terms of dollars. So price of one euro. So one euro, I want to know how much dollars do I have to pay in order to obtain one euro. So that's an exchange rate of euro. Let's suppose I might have to pay 1.05 dollars in order to get one euro. So one euro's exchange rate would be called 1.05 dollars, right? So this is an exchange rate simply expressing one currency in terms of another currency. So we are trying to express the currency. In an in a exchange rate code, like let's suppose this one dollars upon euro, we call the euro as base currency. So this is our base currency. And whereas we call the dollars, dollars we call as price currency. And this is our price currency. So we have because the reason why we're calling dollars as price currency is because we are pricing euros by dollars. Hence, we have given the status to dollars as price currency and euros as base currency, right? There are other codes as well. One is known as direct code. Direct code. And one is known as indirect code. So what do we mean by direct code? Direct code is simply domestic currency upon foreign currency. So we are placing domestic currency on the numerator and the foreign currency on the denominator, such as the Pakistani currency rates. If you go into the Forex markets, Pakistani currency rate are quoted as PKR per dollar. So you can say you must have seen like, let's suppose current rates were going right around 160, 160 PKR per dollar. So we call this a direct code. Indirect code is the opposite. We place the foreign currency in the numerator and domestic currency in the denominator. Usually these indirect codes are used in developed countries because if we start using the indirect code, our code will start to get very small. Like let's suppose if I place one upon 45, it's going to get very small. Hence we use the direct code so it becomes a bit bigger. Whereas in uh, developed countries, they usually use the 
opposite. We use the indirect codes. Like let's suppose in developed countries, if someone wants to see the amount of PKR, it would be opposite, right? So in let's suppose PKR, or you can say euros. So they're going to place the in US euros up and dollars down. So there are two types of currency exchange rates. One is said to be indirect code and the other one is said to be direct code. So simply I'm just reading out this paragraph as exchange rate is simply the price or cost of units of one currency in terms of another. So it's simply uh, pricing the currency in one unit in one currency in terms of another. For this book, for the purposes of this book, we will write 1.416 USD upon Euro to mean that Euro costs $1.1416. $1 if you read the as per you will have no trouble with the notation. We have the exchange rate dollars one pound per euro. Sometimes you will write T upon F to mean that cost of foreign currency in terms of domestic currency. So he has just opened up you with two codes that at times people use direct codes. At times people use indirect codes. As we're going to move forward, it doesn't matter which code you're using because you, either the code you're going to use, you can easily make calculations if you learn the art of making calculations. So we just got an idea what an exchange rates are. Now let's, let's discuss the basics of exchange rates. Let's get to the basics. Number one, there are different markets for exchange rates. There are different markets for exchange rates. Like let's suppose, like let's suppose if you go, if you want to buy right now, today, if you want to buy today, dollars 1000 so you want to buy today dollars 1000 you will be going to the foreign exchange market like let's suppose the retail such as wall street or galaxy exchange markets over here a retail exchange you're going to go over there you're going to buy dollars you're buying that in immediate like you're buying that today so you're buying that in immediate time we call such a market in which you're buying today or immediately such markets are called spot markets. Such markets are called spot markets. Spot markets are those at which currently rate is the rate is given to you. You can either buy dollars, you can sell dollars currently in the retail exchange, right? That are called spot markets. So if I'm reading this spot exchange rate, so one rate is called the spot exchange rate, which is the current exchange rate. So spot exchange rate is the current exchange rate is the is the uh, spot exchange rate is a currency exchange rate for immediate delivery which for most currency means the exchange of currency takes place two days after the trade so immediate delivery either one day or two days after a trade it takes place which is the current exchange rate that is moving like let's suppose you want to make a payment today of us dollars 1000 so you're going to buy the dollars from the spot market you're going to buy the dollars at a spot exchange with the current exchanges that is being prevailed. Then comes the other market, which is called a forward market. Forward market. What do we mean by forward market? Again, suppose today at time zero, you're standing today at time zero and you know today that after three months, but after three months, you have to pay certain amount. So you know today that after three months, you're paying a certain amount. So you know that, right? So uh, it will take three months. You have to pay like, let's suppose dollars 1000. So you don't have to pay dollars 1000 today. You have to pay that dollars 1000 after three months. Now you have to decide. You have to decide that either you're going to wait three months or you can go into the forward market and book today. Today you can book a rate for after three months. So you can book a today a rate that would be implemented after three months, which is called a forward exchange rate, which is called a forward exchange rate. Forward exchange rate right so markets two types spot market is that 
you, you are making a delivery today. Forward market, you are thinking to exchange it in the future and you're taking the rate today in the forward market, right? You're not waiting for three months and take the rate in the spot market then. You're buying the rate today in the forward market. So there are two types of exchange rate. One is called a spot exchange rate and one is called a forward exchange rate. So I'm reading the forward paragraph. Forward exchange rate is a currency exchange rate for an exchange to be done in the future. So it's an exchange rate to be done in the future. Forward rates are quoted for various future dates. They, there are forward rates for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Like in our case, we would have used which forward rate? You would have used a forward rate of 90 days. 90 days. A forward is actually an agreement to exchange a specific amount of one currency for a specific amount of another on a future date specified in the forward agreement. So it's basically an agreement. If I draw your, you know, if I open up, and suppose I give you another example of forward. So let's suppose at time zero, you want to make a payment after three months of dollars 1000 with domestic currencies PKR or you can say euros so domestic currencies euros so after three months you want to make a payment of one thousand dollars right for making a payment do you buy or do you sell so whenever I want to make a payment I make a box over here so for payment, obviously I'll have to buy the foreign currency, buy foreign currency. And if I talk about domestic currency, obviously to buy foreign currency, you're going to sell your domestic currency. Hence by selling your domestic currency. Pardon. So, so if I, so, Foreign currency, you're exchanging in terms of domestic currency. You're selling a domestic currency and you're buying foreign currency when you're making a payment, right? Sell domestic currency and buy foreign currency. If you're making, if you are receiving, if, if it's receipts, like suppose this was payment, right? If this had been receipts, then you do the opposite. You're gonna sell the foreign currency for because you're gonna you're receiving the foreign currency, you sell the foreign currency and you buy the domestic currency. I'm hopeful such logics are prevailing already in your mind. So I don't think you need to you know ponder on it so much. So coming back to an example, three months after three months, you you want to pay one thousand dollars, right? Let's suppose you go to the forward market. So you go to the forward market, there are rates offered to you. 30 days forward rate is offered to you at, let's suppose 1.1 per euro, dollars per euro. For 60 days, forward rate is given to you as dollars 1.11 per euro. And for 90 days, the rate is given to you as dollars 1.12 per euro. So different rates are offered to you. Your contract is for three months. You want to lock today at time zero, a rate of 90 days. So you will buy this contract. You will use the 90 day rate, right? So today only you have received a 90 day rate of 1.12 per euro. So now all the uncertainties are gone. You know which rate you're going to get. And it's an agreement. You have to fulfill it no matter what. So you are clear now that, that the rate that you're going to get after three months, it's 1.12 per euro. At least that uncertainty is, is, is finished. That the rate might get very high. The rate might get very low. Today only you know that you'll get a rate afterwards. Obviously after three months, the rate can goes can go against you also. The rate can go 
with you also. Let, let's suppose 90 days passed. You're here now, your 90 days has passed. And after 90 days, in the spot market, after 90 days, in the spot market, so in the spot, that means the realistic rate after 90 days was dollars 1.15 per euro. So you have to make a payment of dollars 1000, right? So you have to buy dollars. After 90 days, the spot rate was 1.15. Where is the rate that you have been offered, which you have to fulfill is 1.12. Hence, you are at a gain because you have already been given a lower rate. Whereas in the spot market, the rate is higher. So that's the advantage of the forward contract. It can also go against you. There, there could be a case that the spot rate might get lower. Then let's suppose spot rate might be 1.11 per euro. Then you might have been in a loss. You have to fulfill the forward contract no matter what. So your rate is 1.12, whatever the spot rate is, either the spot rate will go for you. You might have, you might have a gain or might, it's either going to go against you. You might have a loss. So this is a forward market. So there are two types of markets, spot markets, and number two are forward markets, right? So we have discussed the two types of markets. So now moving forward. Let's slightly discuss the functions of foreign exchange market. Why do we need foreign exchange market? Or we can say what functions those foreign exchange markets are playing. In order to understand this, let's understand the first dynamics of the foreign exchange, right? So basically, let's suppose you are X, you are X and you want to buy dollars 100 for some reason you want to buy dollars 100 one market that you can go into is called the retail market one is called the retail market which you often see which is also called dealer markets these are dealers of currencies they have different types of currencies with them like let's suppose when you go to buy uh, dollars 1000, you go to an exchange, right? Money exchanger we call. That's a retail market. And you go onto the roads, you find it in different financial institutions. You go, you know, Galaxy, Wall Street, um, money exchanger. They're different types, right? So these are called retail market, which are there offering physical currencies, directly to the consumer. These are called retail market. Where do the retail markets get the currency from? Like let's suppose you're getting the currency on the retail market. From where does the retail market get the currency? They get it from the interbank. So behind that retail market, we have the interbank market. Interbank market. Interbank markets means the exchange rates that is being exchanged between the banks. Let's suppose we have one HBL bank. Let's suppose we have one UBL bank at which they are exchanging currency with each other. That is called interbank exchange rate or the interbank market. They are also quoting exchange rate within each other. You can also directly go to the bank and buy currencies digitally. You can have a currency account in the bank. And at which the bank is giving you that currency that is by the interbank market. That is not a retail market. That's the banker who or the bank providing you the currency, right? So we can say the interbank is the wholesale market of the currency. Whereas the retail market is the retailer of the currency. So first we got this 
idea about the interbank market and the retail market let's understand the functions of foreign exchange market now we can understand we know how many types of markets are there retail market wholesale market right now let's get the functions foreign currency markets serve companies and individuals the, uh, the that purchase or sell foreign goods and services denominated in foreign currency the first thing they are providing is a service let, let, let's suppose you are selling your goods to uk clients obviously they would want to buy peak they can only buy in pkr right or if they pay you in pounds you need to convert that money into pkr for that you need a foreign exchange market otherwise how would you two how would the two countries exchange the goods with each other an even large market however exists for capital flows what do we mean by capital flows capital flows mean like let's suppose people let's let's suppose in country a and country b let's let's suppose country is us and country b is pakistan so people or citizens in us they invest money in pakistan in our equities in our fixed income in our real estate in different investments so they invest money in pakistan this is called capital flows obviously to invest money you need an exchange market because they can only invest in pakistan pkr they cannot invest in dollars hence they need an exchange that role is also playing that is called capital flows foreign currencies are needed to purchase foreign physical assets as well as foreign financial securities as i, as I just told you so now let's go what functions is playing number one it helps the corporations corporation regularly engage in cross border transactions purchase and sell foreign currency as a result enter into fx forward contracts to hedge the risk of expected future receipts and payments denominated in foreign countries currencies so big corporation like let's suppose we can take angro angro is a big corporation right and angro obviously has divisions internationally as well right it has divisions in usa it might have this division in uk it might have divisions in other countries as well hence obviously if they're selling their goods in usa they need to exchange their money exchange the currencies right if they are getting payments in dollars they need to exchange that currency into rupee obviously foreign exchange market is there to facilitate you so the first thing foreign exchange market function is performing is to help and guide corporations number 2 investment accounts now the number 2 important functions if i want to invest in other currency obviously i need to go and open up an investment account in in a bank and in that bank i am investing money in another, another currency not in my currency i am investing that money in another currency so for that purpose also i need a foreign exchange market to help me facilitate me to convert my currency into another currency right so it helps in investment accounts investment accounts of many types transact in foreign currencies hold foreign securities and may both speculate and hedge with currency derivatives real money accounts refer to mutual funds pension funds insurance companies and other institutional accounts that do not use derivatives leverage accounts refers to those various types of accounts of investment firms that do use derivatives including hedge fund firms that trade for their own accounts and other trading firms of various types just to you know cut down and short it up simply there are various types of investment accounts like you might be you might be having an investment account in order to invest in international equities international fixed income international derivatives uh, the term derivatives will be clear in the financial risk management lecture so again what do you want you want to convert your currency into another currency and for that you need a foreign exchange market three governments and government entities we all know governments trans transact in other currencies also like let's suppose pakistan it has to make pay a billion of dollars of loans to imf so that amount is going in dollars and for that purpose they need a foreign exchange market at least to convert their rupees into dollars right so over there also foreign exchange market plays a big role last is the retail market is for us hum jaise bhi 
Like let's suppose if I'm coming from UK, I have you know thousand pounds with me. I want to convert that, go and you know convert that money in Pakistan. Then I'll go to the retail exchange market on different streets. I'm gonna I'm gonna convert my pounds into rupees and do whatever I want to do, whether I want to shop or whatever I want to do, right? So another and plus one more might be I want to hold money. Might be I want to buy pounds for investment. So how can I buy pounds? I, I don't want to open an investment account. I can go and go to the exchange, retail exchange, buy the pounds and keep them as much as I want, right? So that therefore it also helps and facilitate the retail market. So retail market refers to FX transactions by households. We have the households, relatively small institutions, and maybe for tourism, excellent. If I'm going for a tour, I need pounds. If I'm going UK, if I'm going US, I need dollars. If I'm going Europe, I need euros. Cross-border investment or speculative trading. So these are different functions at for which foreign exchange market is helping for. Number one, corporations. Corporation needs active currency transfer. Foreign exchange market is there to facilitate them to investment accounts. We always want another currency in order to make an international investments. For that also we have foreign exchange market free government and government entities usually and mostly you know engage themselves into international transactions they would need foreign exchange for us households who, who are either getting remittances from outside who are either going for tour or for tourism hence for that purpose also we need to convert our currency so these are the functions of foreign exchange currency foreign exchange market just imagine just imagine that if foreign exchange markets gets you know gets vanished all these functions will stop no organization will be able to invest abroad no corporation will be able to sell its goods abroad no pakistani would be able to go and make take a tour abroad so this facilitation is very important that's why foreign exchange market is very important and the second reason because every country has its own currency like us has its own canada has its own us has an own pakistan has its own indian that's why we need foreign exchange markets because there is constant engage of transaction between countries so jab tak until countries are transacting with each other till then foreign exchange markets plays a bigger role and as a pakistan in pakistan we need even a better foreign exchange market we need better foreign exchange reserves as if we want to move on and you know engage with different countries so this is these are the function of foreign exchange market so now we are moving forward hum aage dekhte hain ki what things we going to see now so let's move forward so we did understand the retail market the bank market now let's take a slight concept of conversions how do we convert currencies and a slight concept of bid and ask spread usually when you go to a dealer so let's understand currencies first you want to buy let's suppose dollars 1000 so you want to buy dollars 1000 right that's what you want to do right so obviously you go you you, you will be going to a retailer a dealer of foreign currencies now in order to buy 1000 dollars obviously the dealer would be giving you quotes of dollars so let's suppose dealers have different quotes like let's suppose you live in europe and you want to make an exchange through you want to buy 1000 dollars so let's suppose he have an exchange of 1.05 dollars per euro and dollars 1.1 per euro you always go to an exchange rate you must have seen there are two quotes written over there that's from the point of view of the dealer so and what dealer is trying to say you that this is the bid bid quote and this is the ask quote in other words dealer is ready to buy is ready to buy euros from you 
at this quote at a dollar of 1.05 or dealer is ready to sell you euros is ready to sell you euros at dollars 1.1 okay so the dealers is going to buy euros from you at 1.05 dollars and he will sell euros to you at 1.1 dollars so we'll take 1.1 dollars from you and sell euros to you and if he is buying euro from you going to take euros from you and give you for each euro 1.05 dollars so these are the two quotes called bid ask quote or bid ask spreads why does a dealer does that so in between he can make a profit in buying and selling that's how dealers eventually make profits right so that's why dealers keep a bid spread and a ask spread there are two different types of spreads let me make this more narrow okay right so two kinds of spreads are there further moving as we see there are two kinds of spreads now let's understand the conversion rule so i want to put attention over here and let's understand the conversion rule let's suppose let's suppose you have these two quotes dollars 1.05 per euro and dollars 1.1 per euro so you have these two quotes which are called bid and ask quote you want to buy $1000 you want to buy $1000 so you basically want to buy $1000 now let's watch carefully let's understand how you going to convert always remember your code is the one in which you are the loser you will always lose in the code whether it's a bid code or a ask code you are the loser in that because the difference between the two codes who is getting the gain from it the dealer you don't get the gain so let's do this you want to buy $1000 how do you buy $1000 you give away what euros in exchange so let's suppose i'm writing the code i'm writing the code dollars upon euros and you want what you want in the end dollars you want to buy dollars so convert conversion value should be in dollars you want in the end should be dollars so you have euros in hand what do i do do i multiply euros in order to get dollars or do i divide if i multiply this this cancels out in the end what left dollars so that means in order to buy $1000 i simply needs to what do i need to do i need to give him euros and accordingly i'll get the dollars so i have to use the multiplication rule so what i do i want to i want to buy $1000 right so i want in other words i want to get $1000 so for that purpose how much euros do i need to spend if i want $1000 how much euros do i need to spend for that if i need to calculate how much euros do i have to pay in order to get $1000 so i write the code again code which code i'm going to use so let's suppose i want $1000 right so in the end i want the conversion to be $1000 i need to know how much euros do i have to pay in order to get how much $1000 i have this code over here i have dollars over here dollars upon euros right in order to get $1000 i have to decide which code to use so i have euros over here so obviously i need to be a loser i need to pay the highest amount of euros i need to pay the highest amount of euros so as as if i want to buy $1000 i should end up paying the highest amount of euros that's the code i'm going to use so in order to get the euros so what i do 
to get x amount of euros i simply divide $1000 divided by the quote so i'm using the division of the quote i need to divide it by the quote so obviously i need to be a loser as i repeat i need to pay highest amount of euros so to be a loser what quote should i use do i use the higher quote or lowest quote in a division to get the higher amount of euros i need to use a lower quote because if i use the higher quote the amount of euros will go down so i need to be a loser in this so i'll use the lower quote simply i divide them and i get to know how much euros do i need to pay in order to convert $1000 in order to convert $1000 so if i use the calculator so if i use the calculator it comes in 1000 divided by 1.05 so it comes in to be euros 952 euros 952 so that's what comes in so we're going to do some conversions over here not to worry right now if you don't understand we're going to do more conversions so you get the basic idea behind how do we convert because it's at times very confusing so let's let's use this you have an example over here a dealer is quoting australian dollar upon pound spot rate as this so this is the bid and this is the ask how would we compute the proceeds of converting 1 million pound so if i convert 1 million pound obviously after converting 1 million pound i'll get australian dollars right so how much proceeds of converting 1 million pound if i get and the second is what the proceeds of converting 1 million us dollars so in the end i'll get what if i convert 1 million us dollars so i'll get in the end how much uh, i'll get in the end the pounds right so let's do the first case i want to convert 1 million so i'm writing 1 million so i for 1 million i'm writing 1 million pounds i need to convert this into what obviously i want to convert this into x australian dollars so that's the conversion i want to know so i let's use the same mathematical rule write the quotes first what quotes are you given to you write the quotes not number just the quote of the exchange rate in what terms is it given it's given australian dollar upon pounds so i'll write aod upon pounds and in the end what do i want i want australian dollars right so i want in the end australian dollars how do i get that now right so in the end i want australian dollars right by converting what by converting i have jpb or pounds by converting pounds i want australian dollars so i'm just writing pounds over here so in order to convert these pounds what do i do do i multiply or divide this number if i multiply this this cancels out and i'll i'll be left with australian dollars so now the uh, conversion rule is clear we need to multiply right so i use that conversion rule of multiplication now which quote should i use higher quote or lower quote i have bid and asked two, two quotes the one in which you are the loser then well, the one in which the australian dollars comes the least so obviously i'll use the lower quote i'd use the lower quote which is called the bid quote so i'll use the lower quote 1.05060 multiply by i have 1000 jpb 1 million jpb so i multiply by 1 million jpb so i get how much so if i do the multiplication i get 10 so i get the pound i get the australian dollars 1050600 that's the australian dollars i've got number 2 compute the proceeds of converting 1 million australian dollars so i want to convert 1 million australian dollars if i'm converting that so 
in which currency will that be converted the other currency is so i want to convert that into x pounds right now let's see how many how much pounds do i need to compute for that so again i'll advise you to write the code first as it is odd upon gpp and write the currency you have right now which is you have odd and obviously you need to know jpp you need to know jpp right shall i multiply if i multiply it does not cross multiply i don't get jpp in other in other in other words i need to divide this thing with this one so by reciprocal i'll be left with what jpp so i need to make this a division right to odd so in other words i have to do what odd divided by odd upon global will equals to jpp so a reciprocal will be there and ultimately i'll get what my quotation jpp in other words if i move on this further if i'm dividing this thing it becomes an inverse what i'm doing is simply this in other words i'm doing this 1 upon a upon g is equals to jpb or i can write it in this manner because one upon a upon g becomes an inverse so i can also write this in this manner or into it becomes this or is equal to g so ultimately or or cancel and what is left with i'm left with global pounds so in other words i just simply need to take this number or and divide this number with this one so let's move forward so i need simply the code is this this is the code i want to follow so how much odd do i have i have 1 million odd i'm writing 1000 instead now divided by so i get pounds now i ask you the question again shall i divide with the highest number or the lowest number the number in which i am the loser i should get the least pounds right i should get the least pounds so in the division if we use a higher number in the division we get a low it is all right so i use the higher number that is the ask trade which is 1.5607 5067 so i get 1000 divided by 1.5067 so i get 663.7 pounds so that's the pounds i'm getting and if you want to do in millions just multiply it one with, with another 1000 you get in millions so i've just given a concept how do we make conversions in bid ask this is a logical rule to make sure that you reach to a a good result now i'm going to make it more simpler we can use a simple rule in which you don't have to think the logic as much behind it's going to be very simple so let's do that rule now so now we're going to understand conversion rules right so let's grab that conversion rules so i'm writing here conversion rules so the such conversion rules make it very easy for you to understand the which code to use so when to use division when to use multiplication when to use bit code when to use ask code because mathematically can get it can get longer but these conver conversion rules will clear you up first one down the code ask divide up the code up the code bit multiply so this is not down to codes down the code. very easy so if you are going down the code let's suppose the code we had before was australian dollar upon pounds right australian dollars upon pounds 
So if you go down the code, that means if you're converting from Australian dollars to pounds, so you're going down the code, right? If you're converting from Australian dollars to pounds, you're going down the code. So if you're going down the code, you use the ask, you use the ask code, and you use the division to divide, you use the division for conversion, pardon me. So you use, use the division for conversion, and use the ask, and you, if you're going down the code, right? If you're going up the code, okay, let's suppose you have odd upon pounds. If you're going up the code, which means you're going from pounds, you're converting from pounds to US dollars. So you're converting from pounds to US dollars. You're gonna use bit code, right? You select the bit code and for conversion, you're gonna use multiply. And for conversion, you're going to use multiply. Let's repeat that question again. You had 1.5060, 1.5067. So you had two codes. So repeating that example again. And let's let's count to check our answers. So you had 1.5060 to 1.5067. Let me recheck it. If that's two, 1.5060, 1.5067. Right. So the first thing was the first thing was converting 1,000 pounds. So I'm using the first thing that is converting 1,000 pounds. Okay. Oops, sorry. So I'm converting 1,000 pounds. So I repeat the example. This is the repetition. Repeating the example. So I'm kind of repeating the example. Okay, so the first thing A part was convert 1000 pounds, if I'm not wrong, 1000 pounds. So I'm taking 1000, not million. So 1000 JPP, you want to convert into what? Australian dollars, right? You want to convert in, in Australian dollars. So how are you moving? You're going down the code. If I see, you're moving down the code, right? You're going from dollars to JPP, you're moving down the code. In order to move down the code, we use the ask and divide rule, okay? So I place 1000 GPP here. I use the ask code, which is this one. And I divide you to 1.5067, let's see. So 1000, I made a mistake, I made a mistake, sorry. I made a mistake, a silly mistake. Ho jata, kabhi kabhi ho jata. So, it's, it's up the code, sorry, pardon me. I'm moving from pounds to Australian dollars, so I'm going up the code, not down the code. My mistake, okay? So five, zero, six, seven. So I'm moving up the code. In order to move up the code, so I'm moving up the code. So in up the code, we use the bid. So I want to use this code and multiply rule. So I'm going to simply multiply this by 1.5060. So 1000 multiplied by 1.5060. I know it's an easy calculation, but yet. So I get 1506 pounds. Let's check. Let's check what we got from our calculation. We got the exam same answer. Sorry, it's not pounds. I've converted it into a trillion dollars. So I got the same answer. If you can check over here, I got the same answer. So our convention is working, okay? Our convention is pretty working well. Let's try number two, B. I want to convert 1,000 Australian dollars into pounds. Now I'm using the down to code. So I'm coming from Australian dollars into pounds. So I'm, now I'm using the down to co down the code method in order to use the down the code which code do we use ask and what rule division so i place 1000 here divided by i use the ask 1.5067 let's see what answer do i get so 1000 divided by 1.5067 i get 664 664 pounds, six, six. So you can say 663.7 pounds. Let's check. Let's counter check what did I get 
while, while I was using the logical method, I got the same answer. So with this convention, you're making your, it your, for yourself easier. You're making it easier for yourself not to use such logics, even though the best part is to use logics. But by these conventions, it's faster. It makes your brain faster. You can do all the calculations. It makes it faster. It removes the complication you might face, right? So let's let me give you an example. Let's let you try. Let's try an example. Finger touch is gone. Uh, let's me try again. Finger touch. I want the finger touch. Okay. Okay. I got the finger touch. Perfect. Go down. Go down. Yes. So I'm giving you an example. Let's try that. So if I give you an example, I want you to try it in both ways, a logical manner also, and my convention also, and see, to do the reconcile or not, right? Let's suppose I want to convert, I have a quote of dollars upon, US dollars upon euros. I have a bit code 1.105. And an R code is 1.1057. So I have two codes, bid and ask. So this is a bid code. This is the ask code. Okay. Number one, you need to convert. I want you to convert, uh, let's say, $2,000. And number two, I want you to convert, let's suppose, 2,000 euros. So give yourself a bit time. I want you to convert number one, $2,000 and number two, 2,000 euros. So you have time. I'm giving you three to four minutes for this. Try it. Use my conventions also and use logical also. I want you to try both and reconcile them, right? So try it, try it. I'm giving you time. So try it, giving you time for that. Convert $2,000 and 2,000 euros. So, try. Giving you another two minutes, take your time.
so let's start i guess enough time has been given to you now so let's start now right so i hope you would have done certain calculation because see the reason i paused in between was only because i could have you know asked you to stop the video and do it yourself but the reason i paused so you can actually work along with my classes while watching them right so i want that that you work along with my classes right so let me try it now let me try this conversion so i have to move this a bit down so let me do that so solving this for you so let's suppose i use the convention flow that i've got bid and ask down the code up the code so i'm solving the first part with my conventions and then we're going to do logically as well so number one is converting Two thousand dollars. So I'm converting two thousand dollars. So I'm going from dollars to euros. So for that, if I'm going dollars to euros, I'm going down the code. I'm not wrong. I'm going down the. But I'm converting two thousand dollars. So I'm going down the code. So simply, I take two thousand dollars down the code. Ask divide down the code. Ask divide. So I use the ask code, and I divide that. And I get euros. So if I use this, so two thousand divided by one point one zero five seven, I get one eight zero nine one eight zero nine euros. I hope you got the same answer. Number two, number two, I try. Number two is converting two thousand euros to dollars. So in order to convert, I am converting and going up the code. So I take two thousand euros. As I'm going up the code, I need to multiply because I'm going up the code, and I used to. I have to use the bid. So bid is one point one zero five zero. So answer comes in two thousand euros multiplied by one point one zero five zero, which is two two. Two two one zero dollars. I hope you got the same result, right? So I could have done something else as well. I could have done it logically as well by mathematically logics. So I'm just writing logically. Let's see if you connected logically as well. So number one was converting US dollars to euros. So what do I have? I have dollars, right? I have dollars in my hand. And I I want to get euros, so in the end I want to get euros. So I have dollars two thousand in my hand, and I need to get euros in the end. Let's see the code I have. If I multiply that code, do I get euros? Do they cut out? They don't. So that means I need to divide. I need to use the inverse that is divide. If I use this division. Then both cuts and I'm left with the euros. So and that means I need to divide. So in order to you know move two thousand dollars, I need to divide. Now I need to be a loser. How do I get the least euros by using a higher code or lower code by using the higher code? I divide by one point five zero five seven. I do the same by using the logic also. I do the same. So I get one eight zero nine euros. Let's try number two. I again, write what amount do I have? I have euros. I have two thousand euros. Let me write the code by multiplication. That's dollars upon euro. So let's see. I want to convert euros into dollars. So let's see if I use multiplication, euro euro cancels out, and I'm left with the dollars, right? So that means I can use the multiplication rule. So using the multiplication rule. Which code should I use? A lower code or higher code? I need to have the least dollars. I need to be a loser, so I'll be using a lower code. One point one zero five zero. So I'm using a lower code. So two thousand multiplied one point one zero five zero. So it comes to be same dollars two two one zero. So you you see, I've used conventions also. I've used logic also in order to get you understand how do we use logics. And in order in in order to save you from logics, 
because it takes time and at times you don't understand perfectly you can use my convention down the code ask divide up the code multiply bid right up the code bid multiply you should know you should be knowing the convention of conversion divide or multiply and which code to use bid or ask code 